So another game we played was Caravan. I really, really enjoyed this game. This was probably being my next to Dead of Winter. <laughs> it's my number one, really good. And I think Tom Basil would agree. He was actually sitting right beside us. Um, at one point he was playing the game. We were playing Aquarium and he was playing this game. And I think he actually played it a few times. So that signifies to me that he enjoyed the game. Uh, very nice man, by the way. I met him afterward, amazing on that note. <laughs> so Caravan has, I like the fact that it has two types of art. They have the one that's a bit more kind of modern techie looking and almost a bit of fantasy versus the other, which has more of a spice market type of look. So think Istanbul. Um, I preferred the art in the kind of spice market one. That's just the style I like. However, I like the fact that the other version had jewels and diamonds in them. So that kind of appeals to me right away. Either way, both looked amazing. I'd be happy to get either or. So I, what we played was a prototype. It wasn't completely ready for market, but it was pretty close, not too bad. They had some issues with the diamonds, so they're gonna make them a bit more easy to discern the colors. Now the diamonds in the game, or the jewels, start with yellow, green, blue, and pink, and they go from lowest value to highest value. So you notice there's less pink and there's lots of the yellow. Every player kind of gets their own set of cards. I believe you start with two cards. These cards are what you're gonna use to either upgrade your jewels or to get more jewels. So obviously you need all these jewels, why? So you can complete the other set of cards that are laid out on the table. These are what are gonna give you victory points. Two of the cards in the beginning actually have coins, gold and silver, and that's just the first two in the row. So every time you complete it by getting all the jewels associated to that card, you take the card and the coin that's associated to that card because those are worth points as well as the actual card. Then everything shifts over and a new card is drawn at the end of the pile. So now your two cards with the coins are different. So the silver coins, I believe, give you two, and the gold give you three on top of your points of the cards you completed. So you're probably wondering, how do I get jewels? The, one of the cards that you have only gives you two yellow jewels to start with. There's another set of cards which allows you to uh, convert the yellow to other colors and to even just get more yellow. You can even get more space to hold more jewels on your other card that's laid out. So that's kind of your marketplace where everybody's trying to get those cards. And it's like a small world, so the first one's free and then the next one costs one and the following is two and so forth. Someone picks up the first one for free, you know, then it slides down. If someone wants one later on, then you just pay the cost, drop the jewel on it and then take that card. So then the next person who buys may get a jewel. Anyway, anybody who's played small world will understand that kind of mechanism. So I like the fact that it was quick. People have been comparing it to Splendor. Oddly enough, I'm not a huge fan of Splendor. Ugh, I know I'm gonna hear about this later. It's fine. Splendor, it's a fine game for most people. It's just not for me. Um, people compare it to that. I guess I could see, but I find this game had a bit more flow to it. It was a lot faster. It, you often found yourself going, is it your turn? Did I go, is it me? You guys waiting for me? <laughs> so that's how fast the turns were, but it kept you engaged. We were talking, we were laughing. There were moments of silence, we were concentrating, but it was so quick that it didn't feel like, okay, we're not interacting, it was boring. So I really, really like this game. This was, like I said, a definite top of my list and I, I'm hoping that I can buy it real soon. My favorite game that I played that day was Caravan. Now, the game that we played was actually Caravan, the Crystal Golem edition, which is the one that's going to be marketed in North America. They also had their Caravan, the Spice Road edition. Now, this was really interesting because it short, sort of shed light on how you have to market a game differently to different audiences. The game was exactly the same insofar as the mechanics, the cards, how the game worked, but the entire art uh, on both the box, the cards themselves, even using wooden cubes versus sort of plastic gem looking things uh, in the two different editions, they looked like radically different games. Uh, and the art was great on both. The Spice Road Edition has a sumptuous, rich color. I mean, it looked like you were playing with oil paintings. Um, and the Crystal Golem Edition had sort of a uh, anime feel to it. The mechanics on this game are fast and fun. It's a little bit like Splendor in that you're trying to buy cards with, with different gems, although the gems are worth different levels. So you can upgrade your gems and you can only hold so many, but you can upgrade how many you can hold. Basically, in short, it is a deck builder 
um, but it's it's really really fun it's hard to describe but it's excellent and I absolutely would have bought it on the spot if it had been available and I'm going to go find it and pre-order it right now in fact right right now goodbye so another game that we play that I know you're all waiting to hear about is <gasps> now pandemic <laughs> actually it is sort of <laughs> pandemic pandemic reign of Cthulhu now, anybody who knows me knows I've never played Pandemic. Yes, I know, I'll wait for the silence and the groans that come after that silence. <laughs> it's just a game that never interested me. However, I do like games like Elder Sign and Arkham Horror and uh, Eldritch Horror, like those types of games, I like the theme. So when I saw this, I'm like, hmm, this might be something that interests me, but we'll see. So fun. Maybe it was a group of people we played with. Uh, looking over here, Denise and Sunny, you guys were amazing. Thanks so much for playing with us all day. Um, and they were really big pandemic fans. They're like, we need to try it. So I said, yeah, I'm up for trying anything. Amazing. So I have a little bit of video running and you probably see this um, for this game. Um, I like the fact there's miniatures, which is awesome. I love the board, it's dark. And then the miniatures are stand out because they're that kind of bright green color. So it looks really good. So all the, um, you know, the, the um, Shagoths and the, uh, his little minions, they're all that green kind of color. And then all the all the other characters, like the reporter and the magician, all the people trying to fight the monsters or the ancient ones are gray, so they can be painted. So that was amazing to me. It's really hard. <laughs> the first time we played this game, we did not win. We got to two rounds and that was the end of it. Played it again and we won. Yes, I have to celebrate openly because we were the only ones who won. It was amazing. So. Oh, it was so worth it on the last turn. So it could have gone very wrong. We won on the last and final turn. So that should give you an idea of how hard it is. And you can actually increase the difficulty in this game by drawing. I think it's, you can draw less cards if I'm not mistaken, but once you get to know the game a bit better, you'll be able to determine what works for you. So uh, it did remind me a lot of uh, Arkham Horror and Eldritch Horror because it had uh, portals. So obviously uh, the portals were allowing us to move from one place or one area of the board to another, but it also allowed some of the monsters to move into other places. And we didn't want that because I could kill you, especially if we had multiple on the board. So uh, every person starts off with their character. They have a special ability or an, a special item that they have that they can use and a special ability on the card. Um, the only difference in this game, which I thought was really neat, that if your character goes insane, you're not out of the game. You actually just end up at a different place on the board. I think this is a hospital or a church, not 100%. But um, you're not out. I've played games like Fury of Dracula, so that kind of reminded me of that, where you end up at the hospital, and then you can't, you lose all your items, and then you start over. This game is different. Like you didn't, uh, you, you weren't out, which I thought was kind of cool. So you can continue, but you have less to use of your ability. So you just flip your card over, and it actually tells you what you can do. So you can still do stuff. You're just not as powerful, but you're still in the game. I'm very okay with that. So I thought that was really neat. Um, they have the die where you roll for insanity. So after you take on, you know, one of the monsters of Shagoth, then you can roll the dice to see if you're insane. <laughs> so yeah, of course I, you know, managed to roll a few of those, but still managed to keep my sanity. Um, and I thought that was really neat. They have the row of 10 cards at the top, which are all the ancient ones that could come out. We can trigger them by evil stir cards. Again, that's kind of reminding me of an, like an elder sign situation. So that appealed to me. I didn't feel like, I mean, I, I know the game pandemic. I didn't feel there were any kind of like outbreaks. There are cards that trigger certain things where it kind of, it might say, you know, okay, so this monster's going here, this minion's going here, that sort of thing. So everybody has a turn and yes, that's gonna happen. But I didn't find it was like a complete outbreak in one area and then it went everywhere. So I don't know if that's something that happens all the time in Pandemic. Like I said, I never played it. So for me going into this blind, I liked the game as it was. I'm um, trying to think what else. I think that was the basic thing to know the game. Um, Anybody who else who's played Pandemic, I think will probably like this game. That's the people that I played with. They loved it. <laughs> they loved Pandemic, so it was easy. For me, never playing it and not being a fan of Pandemic, I also really enjoy this. I like the fact that it was hard and there were lots of things going on. Even though it was still cooperative, we still had to work together, but then we had to really plan our turns. We could pass off items as well, but we had to be in the same place. But we also had cards that blocked us from using portals. So, I mean, there was always something that was coming up, so it was really making you think. So overall, I definitely enjoy this game and I would definitely play it again. Pandemic Reign of Cthulhu was the game I was probably most excited to play going into the event and it did not disappoint. This is a Cthulhu themed version of Pandemic, but there are enough 
unique things to this game that even if you own the other versions of Pandemic, I still feel it would be worth picking up. Uh, it is probably my favorite of the Pandemics, although I haven't played Le Legacy, to be fair. Even in the prototype phase, the miniatures were beautiful, and the art was really well done and rich, sumptuous colors. So if you think you're going to like this game, you will. It's pretty solid already, and I'm sure there are going to be a few more tweaks or possibly flavor text added between now and when the game ships.